Hello everybody, this is Brett Lonsdale from Lightning Tools and welcome to another webinar. Uh, this week we're going to be taking a look at one specific tool from Lightning Tools and that is Lightning Forms. And uh, we're going to use Lightning Forms and some SharePoint lists to build a leave booking system. So the idea being that uh, if you've got uh, staff or employees that want to take some time off work, um, then uh, they can quickly and easily do that through Microsoft SharePoint or also by using the list forms through Microsoft Teams and so on as well. So before we get going on that, I just want to first of all introduce you to Lightning Tools. So um, Lightning Tools, we are in our 14th year of building collaboration tools for Microsoft SharePoint. And uh, of course, more recently as well, uh, we've been building uh, products for, for Microsoft Teams as well. So, uh, so our, our tools are supported all the way back through to uh, SharePoint 2007 and um, have evolved through to uh, classic SharePoint Online and modern SharePoint Online. Um, and, and that includes Lightning Forms, which is available for, for classic lists and libraries as well as modern lists and libraries. And uh, like I said, of course, we've, uh, we've also got some applications that are available for, uh, for SharePoint Online Modern and also for, uh, for Microsoft Teams now. So uh, lots more to uh, find out about that on our website. So you'll be able to go to our website, lightningtools.com, uh, click onto the products uh, page and you'll be able to see all the different products that we do. Uh, they include things like permissions management and content aggregation, uh, data visualization tools, and uh, we've also got uh, a description forum product as well, uh, which is uh, proving really useful in these times. So um, we're headquartered in the UK. Uh, we also have a US office in Orlando, Florida, and uh, we're a gold partner, uh, both for collaboration and content and also for application development as well. And I'm proud to announce that uh, myself and also my colleague, uh, Sandy Yusia, uh, both uh, were we awarded the, the MVP award uh, just a few days ago, the beginning of July. So um, yeah, that's me uh, going to be presenting. So my name is Brett Lonsdale, and uh, I founded Lightning Tools uh, back in uh, 2007. All right, so uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be building a quick, convenient um, application where employees can, can book leave, uh, as I mentioned. So if they've got their uh, annual leave that they want to take, uh, they can book that. Um, if it's the odd day here and there, they can book that too. If they're going to be off sick, um, well, if you get the chance to, uh, to book it, then you can uh, you can also book that through the form as well. So what we're looking for is something that's going to be uh, really easy to, um, to to create, easy to use for for the employees looking to to book time off work. Uh, but we also want to uh, make it easy to manage as well. So we're going to have um, some, some great sort of approved decline type options where managers can, first of all, see you know, how much time you had allocated. They can actually allocate um, time as well to you, uh, but also they can approve your uh, vacation or holiday requests and they can also decline them. And, uh, and that will send an email directly to the employee. Uh, and if they are declining, then you want to know why. Uh, so uh, one of the things you can do there is also put in a reason, uh, and that's going to be sent via an email. And uh, as I mentioned, you can also, as an employee, always sort of keep track of how many days you've taken so far, how many days you've got left, uh, and how many days you've rolled over, that sort of thing uh, through this application. So that's exactly what we're going to build. And um, hopefully we'll get that done from start to finish in an hour. So, uh, so we're going to do a demonstration. We're going to jump straight into Lightning Forms in just a moment. And just so you can understand that there are no sort of smoke and mirrors, what we're going to do is start off with a completely blank SharePoint site. So you're going to see me create that site, and you're going to see me create three lists. And those, uh, those lists, two of them are going to be created from the custom list template using no content types or anything like that. We're just going to start off uh, by building the different fields that are going to make up our solution. And uh, once we've done that, we're going to go through and uh, open up Lightning Forms. And this is where we'll start to improve the layout of those forms. Uh, so we've got a much sort of slicker user interface. Uh, we're not taking up too much space um, where users have to scroll up and down and miss the different fields that they need to fill out and things like that. So it's going to be logical. It's going to be organized into tabs. Uh, we're going to bring all three lists together into one form. So you'll be able to, first of all, um, see the allocations uh, that ha have been made, how many days you've got remaining, and you can also book uh, leave as well uh, via the same form. So, uh, so you'll see how all of that comes together into, uh, into one solution. And we're going to do all of this by maintaining 
the standard sort of look and feel of a SharePoint list. The modern lists in SharePoint look great. Um, these are the ones that I'm referring to, the, uh, the sort of side panel uh, that you see. It's responsive, so as your browser page uh, is increased or not, um, then, uh, you know, like I say, if you're going to see this on a mobile device or on a tablet or on a desktop machine, um, a small laptop and so on, it's it's going to be responsive to that uh, to that screen size. So um, this is one of the achievements that we can uh, certainly achieve using Lightning Forms as we go through. And this is going to be a live demonstration all the way through. Um, so the last bit there, just a bit of a joke, I reserve the right for this to go wrong because, well, <laughs> you know, it does sometimes. So um, this is recorded as well, so you can always play it back. And I've also created a blog post today that itemizes everything that I'm going to do in this demonstration. So if you want to try this out for yourself, um, you can open up that blog post. If you go to lightningtools.com, click on the blog, uh, you're going to see the steps uh, on there that we're going to perform. And that will also give you a button where you can go to and download Lightning Forms as well. All right. So uh, so I guess let's get on with it. Uh, so I'm going to um, just alt tab here into my SharePoint uh, environment. And uh, in here, we're going to go through and create a new team site, as I mentioned. So we're going to uh, give this a name. We're going to call this Leave Booking or leave booking system, something to that effect. It's going to check, obviously, whether that site name is available for me, um, the email address, et cetera, because we're creating a group here. Uh, so we're creating a, a Microsoft 365 group. I'm going to choose next. And at the moment, I'm not going to bother with adding any additional owners or members. But of course, you know, real life, we go through and add some of those, whether they be AD security groups or um, individual users. Uh, we could do all of that through there. And uh, it's always a surprise what color you're going to get uh, when you create a new site nowadays. So I've got the teal, which is my favorite. <laughs> so, uh, so I've got the, uh, the SharePoint teal color. Um, but of course, you could go through and, and change that color if you were. If you do this exercise and you end up with that ghastly yellow or something like that, then you can always switch it back. OK, and before we do anything else, I'm also going to just spin up a team here. So um, by clicking on to create a team, that's going to teamify this site for me. And uh, when we go into Teams, uh, we'll also be able to uh, access these lists via the Teams tabs as well. So there's a SharePoint app that you can add to any tab. And uh, as you add that, you'll see that you can actually utilize the customized forms uh, that we're going to be building um, inside your Teams tab as well. So whether people prefer to use SharePoint as a platform or Teams as a platform, they'll also be able to use this leave booking system. OK, so uh, the next step is to start building some lists. So, so what I'm going to do here is click onto the cog in the top right hand corner. And uh, I'm going to click on to add an app. And I waffled for a moment there deliberately, because uh, actually, when you go straight here, you don't always see all the different apps. <laughs> so if you can talk for about 30 seconds, you uh, you get them all. And uh, in here, we're going to see the, uh, the custom list. So I'm going to select the custom list first of all. And we're going to go through and create a list called Leave Booking. So, uh, so there it is. And there's a giveaway there that I practiced this earlier. So, uh, so we'll call this Leave Booking. Hit Create. And we've now got the uh, Leave Booking list. And before we do anything with that, I'm going to create a couple of other lists. So we're going to add an app again. And once more, we're going to choose a custom list. And we're going to call this one. Uh, it's not leave booking calendar. Uh, we're going to call this one book leave. There we go. So go through and uh, enter that. So we've got our book leave list. And the last one, as my uh, type head gave away, is going to be the uh, leave booking calendar. I should actually change the name just to fool the browser. But uh, there we go. So we've got um, three different lists here. In fact, sorry, I made a boo boo already. Let's just go through and delete that. At least I realized just now we're not halfway through the demonstration. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just go through and recreate that one. So we're going to add an app again. Uh, this one is actually based off of the calendar list template. So hopefully it will allow me to reuse that name. If not, we'll have to give it a different name. Yeah, we're good. OK, so we've got uh, three different lists here. We've got leave, uh, book leave, we've got leave booking, and we've got the leave booking calendar. And we're going to start off inside the leave booking. And as you can see, we've got the title field, which you always get. We could go through and rename that if we wanted to, but I'm not too fussed. I'm just going to leave that as it is. And I'm going to go through and add some additional columns in here. So first one we're going to create is a person column. 
and that is going to be employee. So, uh, so we're just going to accept all the defaults on that one. So we've got the employee, and I'm going to go through and create another person com column, and this is going to be my manager. So uh, we'll select that, and we've, uh, we're also going to have the period start date. So the purpose of this is that we would basically create this sort of each year, and so we'd have maybe the start date of the 1st of January, and uh, the end date being the last day of December, the 31st of December. Okay, so, uh, so we're gonna have a date time, and we don't need the time, so we'll just accept the defaults again. So we've got the period start date, we'll have the period end date. Let's just go through and create that one. There we go, so we now have period end date. And uh, we also want to have three other fields that are gonna be number fields, and these are gonna allow us to sort of keep track of how many holidays we've had inside this um, leave period, the, the, the annual um, leave period. So we'll have uh, allocated days. So uh, we're, we're gonna set that. I could give it a default value, but I'm gonna show you just how we can do that through Lightning Forms, um, just for, for convenience, but that's gonna be a, a number field. So we've got allocated days, and we're also gonna have the number of days taken, which is gonna be, again, a number field. And one more is going to be the uh, the days remaining. Uh, so we can always see how many days we've got left, just in case people can't add it themselves. So uh, we've got that there. All right, so that, that's all the columns that we need uh, for this form. And as we hit new, uh, of course, that's going to work. We've got the, uh, the, the fields here displayed. Uh, you do have a new edit form. In, in SharePoint nowadays, so we can edit the columns, but it's really just sort of showing and hiding them. Um, and we've also got the ability to do it in Power Apps. And when you go into Power Apps, it takes you out of the context of SharePoint and puts you into the Power Apps designer. And um, it can also be quite complex. First time you use it, there's quite a big learning curve with, with Power Apps. Um, so hopefully you're gonna see that uh, Lightning Forms today is a lot, lot easier to, uh, to start using this in context, in, in, sorry, in context of, uh, of SharePoint as well. So that's our, uh, our first form uh, created, and, oh sorry, our first list created. Now we're gonna go back into site contents, and we go into the book leave list. So inside the book leave list, uh, again, we're gonna leave the title field alone, and we're gonna have a start date. So start date for our vacation or whatever we want to do. And we're going to have an end date. So we've now got that. And we're going to have a reason. So this is going to be a choice. So we don't need to know too in depth what the reason is, but we'll just have whether it's you know, part of your annual leave or whether it's sick leave or something else, like you go into the dentist or, or whatever. So we just have other in there. Okay, so we've got the uh, the reason in there, and then we're going to keep sort of track of the approval. So I'm going to add a, uh, a field called approved, and we're going to have that default to no. Uh, we don't want to default to yes for all of the, uh, the holiday bookings. And finally, I'm just going to have a single line of text here called comments. And um, we don't want to encourage people to go crazy with those, uh, so we don't need a, a rich text field. We just want a, a single line of text. All right, so uh, there's our our book leave so employees can come and fill this out and, and book their leave and one thing you'll notice here is I don't have the employee in there uh, because we're going to get that from the other um, form once we start customizing so that's given me my my list and now we're going to jump into the actual customization of, of all of this so we're going to go back to site contents and we're going to begin with the leave booking so we'll, we'll go into that now we can conveniently open up lightning forms um, from the uh, from the command bar here, so we'll choose the Lightning Forms customization dialog, and that is going to show me three different forms. And you can see that they're all currently uncustomized. Otherwise, this button would say that they have been customized. Uh, and we're going to start off with a new form, ASPX. So, uh, so we'll click onto that, and that will launch our designer for us. And it's launched it with inside. SharePoint. We're actually uh, inside this design experience, so we've got all of the context of the site that we're in, the current user, the site collection, 
uh, that we can use as part of our sort of logic building when we're going through building these calculations and so on. And that's the thing that you lose uh, when you're uh, when you're opening up in, in Power Apps and that sort of separate uh, design interface. So um, while we're in here, uh, what we're going to do is first of all do some layout stuff. So what we're going to start off with um, by hovering over each of these controls, it allows us to sort of insert more controls and also get into the expression dialogues. We can drag and drop and move around as you can see. Uh, but what we're going to do here is first of all start off with a control just to add a bit more of a, a sort of um, heading and instructions to this form. So I'm going to choose the rich text and inside the rich text um, we're just going to enter that this is a leave booking system. So uh, we'll give it the title of leave booking and we're going to make that a heading and we'll make it centered and coming down after that we'll just have uh, some centered text saying please book your leave and track your leave within this form okay so you can insert this rich text anywhere on your on your form uh, to just provide heading or, or like i say uh, some some useful instructions on, on how to use the form as well so underneath that, we're going to um, change the layout slightly by rather than having this long list of different fields, uh, we're going to start off with some tab controls. So I'm going to select some uh, some tabs in here. We've started off with, with one tab and over on the right hand side, we can insert a couple more. So just by clicking onto that a couple of times, we'll get two more tabs. Um, we can double click inside the uh, tab label and that allows me to go through and rename this. So we're going to have um, book your leave as the, the first tab and the middle tab is going to be the um, uh, leave calendar and the third one is going to be allocation so um, we'll call that uh, I forget what's going to call that um, allocation of leave there we go so we've got our, our three tabs and we could go through and insert some different icons and things like that just by clicking onto that icon there so we can browse to uh, to an icon and um, or, or we could just leave it as text uh, I'm going to leave mine as, as text there so we've got some some tabs and under the first tab uh, we're going to insert a sub list so in here is all the different fields that make up the master form uh, but as I scroll down you'll see we've got some other controls things like toolbars and buttons and rich text and tabs uh, and then further down we've got the lists and libraries that belong to this site and uh, and this is where I'm going to insert the book leave so uh, so that is embedded that list into this form uh, so we've now brought two lists into the same form and over on the right hand side here we've got the list configuration and in that list configuration um, there's a, a checkbox to say use this as a sub item and basically what that means is it's going to go through and create a lookup column for me so that it joins these two lists together so you can do this manually for sure inside the list itself um, but there's quite a few steps involved all I need to do is say use this as a sub list and uh, here we've got the ability to select a lookup column if we've created one already which I haven't so I'm going to click the plus and that is going to create this lookup column for me called lookup to leave booking and essentially we're going to end up with a one-to-many type join uh, between the leave booking and the book leave uh, so we, we're getting all of that sort of uh, we're not having to repeat things like the, uh, the employee uh, that is making the uh, the leave booking because that's already embedded in this form uh, just like creating a relational database so uh, we've got that created uh, we could show and hide some different things so we've got some appearance settings that we can uh, um, set here so whether we want the command bar uh, to be displayed or not uh, whether we want to be able to search the uh, the leave booking and do we want to show the header which is where it just says book leave um, so I'm not really fussed about any of that so we'll just choose okay and uh, we've got that now embedded on the form and that will also maintain its own form so this list obviously is a separate list so as I click new that's going to open up yet another new form in the side panel uh, and we could make some customizations to that as well which is uh, actually something we are going to do so we've got the, uh, the the book leave I'm going to go onto the leave calendar and under the leave calendar we're going to insert the uh, the, the calendar list now this I'm going to hear a little 
silent sigh from you all. Uh, so as I choose the, uh, the the leave booking, it is a calendar list, but it's not actually going to display the calendar for me, unfortunately, um, because it's a, a classic list and this is a modern form. Um, but uh, we will be able to still see um, all of the different bookings uh, that have been approved by other team members. So before you make your booking, you could come in here and have a quick check uh, to see whether any of your team members are also off at the same time as, as you want to be. So there's no need to actually link this one to the master list because uh, this isn't about the current employee. This is about everybody that's inside this team site that has made a holiday booking. We want to be able to see their holidays as well. Uh, so uh, it's just a, an unrelated list. So I'm going to leave that one as it is and, and just choose OK to that. And we'll be able to see all of those entries uh, being made in there. And of course, we could tidy that up, get rid of some of those columns, but I've only got an hour. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave them in there. So we've got our leave calendar. The third tab here is the allocation of leave. And a couple of things that we want to do here. Um, I'm going to show you the steps to, uh, to, to basically make this only appear for somebody that might be a manager or somebody that might be an approver or something like that. But we're not actually going to do it because I don't want to keep switching users to, to show you how this works. Uh, but I will point out that in here, we've got two different properties. We've got visible and we've got enabled. So if we had a tab that we wanted to make all of the fields visible but um, disabled, uh, then what we can do is, uh, is go through here, set an expression. And one of the favorite expressions that I've got is to actually come into the contextual objects and go under the user. Uh, so like I mentioned, you've got a full context of the environment you're in. We can see things about the page. So things like the culture, we can get query string uh, parameters and things like that. We've, uh, we've also got um, things like the item ID that we can get from the form uh, and so on. So, so full context of, of all of these properties. And uh, in here is one called is member of group. So under user. So in here, I could add that. And if I had a group, which you know of not because you saw me create the site, um, but if I had a group called uh, sort of leave booking managers or leave booking approvers or something to, to that effect, we could enter that in there. And then this tab would only be enabled for that group. Um, so employees, in other words, wouldn't be able to allocate themselves more leave uh, or anything like that. Um, they would have to go with what they were given. So, uh, so that's one thing that we can do. And uh, I might just demo that to you at the very end. Um, but for now, uh, I need to have these fields enabled for me. Uh, so uh, I'll leave that as it is. And uh, we could do the same thing with visible. So if we wanted um, the tab to actually just not display at all for uh, certain users, uh, then we could do that. And that is useful for things like an approve button, actually, uh, which we will be doing. So um, there's some of the properties we could set on a tab. Uh, whilst we're in this tab, I want to have some side-by-side -side fields. So what we're going to do is go into the row configuration. And instead of just having one column, we're going to have two columns. So, uh, so we now have these two columns. And what we're going to do is start to add these fields that we want. Now, you can drag and drop these. So we can just simply drag in things like the title. Uh, we can drag in the employee and the employee's manager. Um, we could drag up here the start date and the end date for the, uh, the leave booking period. And also things like the allocated days, uh, number of days taken. And I'm going to leave the days remaining out so that uh, because I'm going to disable this tab, I want that to be fully displayed to the user, even if they're in the book your leave uh, tab. So, uh, so we'll leave that one at the bottom there. And uh, I never want to attach anything to a list. I don't know about you guys, but um, I'm just going to remove that. So, uh, so that's gone. OK, so we've got a, a bit of a better layout. Um, now, the only other thing that I want to do, and I'll show you this if I just save and close, is I want to make the initial form size a little bit bigger, because when we hit new, as I mentioned, we still get this um, side panel. It's still responsive. Uh, but because I've got three tabs, it's a little bit narrow. Uh, so we're just going to make that initial size a little bit bigger. Um, but it will still be responsive, as you'll, uh, you'll see in just a moment. So we'll close that, go back into the um, configuration. So we'll hit on the new form.aspx, which is the, uh, the one that we're configuring. OK, and, uh, and in here, we can go up to the form settings in the top left hand corner and notice we can change our sort of initial right side uh, panel size. So we're going to make this a large one. 
And uh, there we go, we'll, we'll be able to fit all of these fields in and you'll see that next time I, uh, I test that. Okay, so um, we've got our, uh, our list created and uh, we've customized the, uh, the, the form layout of that initial form. Now's the time to start doing some calculations. So, so what I wanna do first of all is uh, go into the title field and we're going to configure the expressions. So you'll notice as we hover over any of the fields, um, we get the ability to move the form element, we can delete the, the element, um, or we can also go in and configure the expressions. And that brings up the expression configuration on the right hand side. And in here, we've got some of the different properties that you can set. So uh, whether it's visible or enabled, just like we had on the tab. Um, and then we've also got initial and calculated. Um, so default value and calculated value. And, and then we've also got some validation. So straightforward, you know, is it required? Um, also a validation rule that we can set and also validation text that will be displayed if it doesn't meet the validation rule. So, uh, so what we're gonna do in here is um, make this calculated. So we're gonna hit the expression builder. Now, the nice thing about the expression builder is most of the time you don't even need to use your keyboard uh, to, uh, to, to build some of these expressions. Uh, we can just use the tree view that you've got on the right hand side here to build them and you've got all the different operators at the bottom there as well and you can even test this against an item if you've got an item already created uh, so you can test maybe create a few different items with different values in it and you can test those uh, to make sure your form is going to work properly and you'll, you'll be able to see what the outcome is of those values so uh, so what we want to do is just give it some sort of uh, title and what i'm going to do is just some straightforward concatenation where we take the employee and uh, I'm just going to add a hyphen and we'll have the period start date, another hyphen. And we'll have the uh, the period end date. OK, so just to give it a unique value uh, where we can recognize the employee. And um, we've also got the uh, the recognition of, of what year this belongs to. So that's going to be my initial uh, calculator field. And then we'll hit save and notice that's gone here into that calculated property and uh, we can choose OK. So that's that first field taken care of. Um, we've then got the uh, the period start date and the period end date. I'm just going to leave those uh, as manual. Uh, the employee, uh, what we're going to do is just make everybody's life a little bit easier. Uh, we'll set the initial value for that. And we're going to, again, get the contextual objects. So I'm going to go into the contextual objects, select the user, and, uh, and in here we'll take the users. Um, well, we could go with the login name or the title. So, uh, so we'll choose that and that's put that uh, username in there for me uh, when we create a uh, new request for, uh, for, for the leave booking. And of course, we, we can override that. So if we're building this for somebody else, then, uh, then we can do that. And we could do the same thing with the manager as well. So um, under the, uh, the initial, um, if we expand the contextual objects under the user, uh, we can expand the user's profile properties and in here we've got manager. So we could always default to the manager of the current user and, uh, and drop that into the form too. And there's some nice straightforward ones. So over on the right here, we've got the, uh, the allocated days. So most companies are going to have a sort of general uh, rule. Um, so we're going to set 25 in, in there. So, so 25 days uh, initially is, is what you'll get. And uh, we've got the number of days taken, which I'll, I'll just leave it as it is. So we've got some default values. Um, in fact, sorry, I'm not going to leave that one as it is. <laughs> so we're going to go into the uh, the number of days taken, click onto the uh, configure expressions again. And this time, uh, what we're going to do is go into the calculated property and we're going to work with our sub list. So the sub list is the leave booking list that we put on for this form. So as I expand that, notice we've got uh, book leave and we've also got the book leave booking calendar. So under book leave, I missed a field. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me just uh, say where we're at for a moment. Uh, in fact, what we're gonna do is just, uh, yeah, so let's just save and close this. I did miss off a field in there. Don't know why, but I did. So uh, so under site contents, it's just to prove that it's live, really. That's what that's why. So, uh, so in here, we're going to go into the um, book leave. All right. I didn't want to get around with doing a, cal uh, a calculation on the start date and the end date. So the, the field that I actually missed off is the number of days. Uh, so uh, we'll just call that days. 
Okay, and we're going to trust the employee to be able to calculate how many days they are going to be uh, ticking. So, uh, so that's created. And now we'll jump back into our leave booking. Drop back into the new form ASPX. Okay, and hopefully, yeah, we've got that here in the list. So this is the column that we want to. So if you book two weeks off um, in your calendar, um, effectively, we're going to take 10 working days off. So we'll enter 10 in here, but you can book multiple leave dates at the same time. And what we want to do is take all of those values for that given employee and, uh, and calculate the number of days taken. So with that, we're going to configure the expression here and we're going to go into the uh, calculator property. And again, we'll expand sublists, we'll expand book leave, and in there we've got days. So as I expand that, um, these are some aggregate functions that we can use. So notice we've got things like sum, average, count, min, and max. So I'm just going to double click here on sum, and that puts in the expression for me to calculate that from the sublist. Okay, and we can uh, save that once again, and we've got our calculation there created. So days remaining. Uh, last calculation that we're going to do before we get into some actions. Uh, this one, uh, we're going to go into the calculator property, and we're simply going to take the uh, allocated days and deduct from that the number of days taken. So the employee can always see how many days they've uh, they've got left. Okay. So there are all the uh, the calculations that we uh, we, we want to do on uh, on this form. So we're going to save and close this one. OK, and uh, before we test this out, we're going to go into the book leave list. And inside the book leave list, we're going to again launch the, uh, the Lightning Forms customization dialog and we're going to customize the new form.aspx. OK, and uh, we're going to leave the ability to save and cancel. So it might be that you halfway through filling in this form and um, you just want to check with your wife or something that you got the dates right or whatever it is uh, that you're doing. Uh, so you don't want to request the leave just yet. So we're going to leave the, uh, the ability to save and cancel. But notice that I could, if I wanted to, come in and customize the logic of those buttons. So we can customize what the save button does and add some additional logic into there. Uh, what we're going to do is actually uh, create another button and we could add a button on the form just like the save and cancel so it's embedded on the form um, but in the modern lists in SharePoint you also get the command bar at the top so you get the save and cancel on there and what we're going to do is uh, is create our own buttons on that command bar so we're going to choose the command bar option and inside the command bar actions uh, we're going to hit the plus to add a new action and in here we're going to create an action called request leave okay so, uh, so we've got that as the display name and we're going to choose a suitable icon so we in here we can go in and select an icon and there is a plane there we go so we can choose whether we have a an outline of a plane or a, a solid plane let's go for a solid plane it sounds better than an outline of a plane so, uh, so we've got that and we could again configure the visible and the enabled expression. So if there was something like the approve button, uh, again, we don't want people approving their own holiday requests. So um, that's something that we can make sure that only approvers get to do and uh, and have it disabled or invisible to, uh, to everybody else. So we've got that. We can go through and configure the actions. So one of the, uh, the, the first actions that we want to do is a save form. So uh, we'll save it. And we're then going to add another new action in here and that new action is going to be uh, an email so we can come down here and choose the send email and in here we'll uh, we'll choose who it's going to be sent from so it's going to be sent from the current user so we'll put the current user's email in there and in the to field uh, i'm going to uh, this is where the type head works in my favor i'm just going to put in a static email uh, which is going to be me, uh, just so that uh, you see that email coming through. It's always nice to prove that things work. So, uh, so in there we'll have a holiday request, and in the body we could uh, 
type a message and we can also concatenate it with some fields. So we can obviously go to town on this, having sort of dear manager, uh, include a link and, and things like that uh, to the item. I'm just going to keep this fairly straightforward saying, please can I book this time off? And uh, in there we could, of course, put in the sort of start date and the end date or, or something like that. Okay, I think you get the idea uh, of, of that one. So, uh, so that's the save form and the uh, the send email, just to keep that nice and straightforward. Okay, so that then gets created as a command bar action, uh, which will appear at the top next to the, the save and cancel buttons. So then we're going to add another one, and that other one is going to be the approve. So we can approve it, and again we'll select an appropriate icon. So we've got the check mark. And again, we could enter our expression, which I will do shortly, but I'll leave that there for now. And once more, I'm going to do a save form. And then we're going to add another action, which is going to be set form field. So I'm going to set the approved, which is defaulting to no, and we're going to set that to one, um, since it is a Boolean value. Uh, so that won't work if we actually put in the value of yes, it's going to take as a string, so it's, uh, it's one. Um, for, uh, for yes, we'll set that. And um, again, we want to send some email notification. So in the send email, once more, we could do that from the current user because that current user is this time going to be, um, sorry, I'm just randomly clicking. There we go. So we're going to send that from the, uh, the manager because the manager will be the current user. And uh, Instead of sending it to the employee, I'm just going to send it to myself, so you'll be able to see that again. And in here we'll put uh, holiday approved, and we'll say your holiday is approved. Okay, and then we're going to add one more action. That other action is going to put that holiday in the calendar. So in here we're going to add a list item, and we're going to add a list item to another list on this site. It could be in a different site if we want. We're going to add it to the to the one in this site, and it's the leave booking calendar. So we're going to create it as an event, which is the content type, and the title is going to be uh, picked up from the reason. So again, we could do some concatenations and things like that there. And we're going to map the start date, uh, which is required, to the start date of the holiday. So we'll grab that, and we'll grab the end date, and of course we could fill out any other things as well um, that we, uh, we we want to fill out. Okay, um, the, the category in here, uh, we could do, I think there's actually one called holiday, but I'm not going to chance that because I know it's a choice field, uh, so I'll just leave it uh, as that is. Um, and that will be my, uh, my approval. And um, we'll hit save, and that's ready to go. And one final button, which we'll do is have reject. So in here we've got the cross, and we'll configure the action, and we're just going to have an email in here, and this time it's going to be again from the current user. To this demo user, and we'll have holiday rejected, and in there we're going to just grab the comments. There we go. So that's where you can put your, your comments. So we're going to send that across uh, in the email. OK, so we've got our, uh, our solution built. And um, let's save that. And we'll hit Save and Close. And we'll give this a go. So, uh, so in here, we're going to go back to our site contents. We'll go to Leave Booking. And we're going to hit New. So we get our wide form that we wanted. And in here, we've got this defaulting to the current user. Notice that I didn't have a manager set, um, but I only set that as the default. So we can always go through and manually create our, our manager. Uh, we'll set through the, uh, the period start date. So in here, we'll set this to kick off from the 1st of January. through to December the 31st. 
Uh, we've got the allocated days, uh, which is defaulting to the 25 that we set. And of course, we haven't taken any vacation yet. Uh, so the number of days taken is, is empty, as is the days remaining. OK, so, so that's what we can sort of do, go through and set that up for, for each of our employees. Now, the employee can come in to the Book Your Leave tab and create a new leave request. So in here, we could have a summer vacation. We can choose a start date. Uh, so let's go with today. Nothing like a bit of notice. Uh, so we'll have two week vacation in here. Uh, reason will be annual leave. And of course, we might want to hide these um, from the employee uh, so they can't prove their own. And in there, we're going to put 10 days worth of uh, working days uh, taken. And um, again, we could uh, we could just save that, or we could also request leave, which is the new command button that we created at the top there. Uh, and we could even add those onto the form itself if we wanted to. So I'm just going to hit request leave, which saves it. And uh, of course, I could hit save there as well. And in a moment, hopefully, you'll see an email come through. It always does it when I'm practicing, but never in uh, in demo mode. But never mind. We'll, we'll go into the email in a moment if it if it doesn't. Uh, you can see there the the, uh, the the leave request and the days remaining has gone down to 15. And if we just jump back here to the allocation of leave, uh, you can see that there's 10 days taken there from the 25 days that were initially allocated. So we can always see as the employee uh, if this tab is hidden, how many days we've got remaining. Uh, for us to leave uh, or, or to take his leave. So um, that's how we can uh, go through and create one of those. So let's just go through and, uh, and create one more. So we'll have uh, yet another summer vacation. So maybe we want to go away in August as well as July. OK, and so that's going to be maybe another 10 days with a vacation in there. And I'm just going to hit save on that one. OK. And uh, and in here, uh, we're going to hit approve. So, um, so we'll approve this uh, vacation. And that's set that approved to, uh, to yes. And once more, that should also send through uh, another email. OK. So um, let me just go through and check that email. So in here, we'll just open up the uh, the Outlook. Kind of hoping I wouldn't need to. Um, we'll go. Yep, so here we are. Uh, we've got the uh, holidays approved. And we've got the holiday request um, sent just a, a few minutes ago. OK, which didn't come across great, but uh, but we got it. All right, so um, we've, we've got those. And the other thing that this should have done is created a calendar entry. There we go. We've got our annual leave um, blocked out uh, for the uh, for the calendar as well. So we can always go through and uh, and see that has been done for our team as they uh, get their holiday requests approved. So once more, we we'll just go back to the, uh, the the book leave and um, we're going to go into leave booking. And under the Lightning Forms customization dialog, uh, let's go back into the new form.spx. Oh, let me just refresh the page there. Okay. Oh, sorry, something strange going on. See, I knew something would go wrong somewhere along the lines. <laughs> okay. Bizarre. Okay. Uh, never mind. Okay. So what I was going to show you is just hiding that tab, but I kind of already explained it. So uh, never mind. Uh, the other thing I do just want to show you that you can do is when we go into the uh, any of the lists that we've we've customized, and hopefully this will work on on this one this time around. 
is when we're inside the uh, customization, we can go through and export the configuration. So uh, if we've made customizations using tabs and things like that, we can export the form, um, which as you can see down here is exported that as a, as a JSON file. And we can then save and close this and bring that same design into the other uh, form. So as we uh, as we launch the customization, we want that same design applied to the edit form and also to the display form. So we can go into customize for the edit form. I do need at least one list item uh, for that. Let me just go ahead and create one. Okay, so we're just going to go into the uh, Sorry, SharePoint's going all crazy on me. There we go. So we're going to the uh, into the edit form, and then we can import that design uh, in here. So we can uh, click the import from, and that would allow us to browse to our file and the same changes applied uh, to the form that we uh, we got from there. Okay, so. Um, Hopefully that's uh, given you a bit of uh, an insight into the things that we can do. Um, that's not covered all the features. There's some other bits and pieces that we can do as well. Uh, things like form load actions. Um, we've also got uh, cascading lookups and, and things like that that we can do. Uh, these have all been covered in previous webinars as well. Uh, so you know, if, you, if you want to have a, a demonstration of that, you, you can do. Uh, but also, if you want to have a, a private demonstration, um, maybe we can show you how to build one of the solutions that you want to build. Uh, that's also something that you can uh, you can arrange with us. Now um, we've also got a little bit of a competition coming on. So um, if you've been to an event and you've come across the Lightning Tools uh, booth or stand before, um, you'll always know that we like to give away some Lego because it's all about building solutions. <laughs> so um, we're going to give away a Lego Lamborghini to uh, somebody who is interested and builds a 10 minute video demonstrating the solution. If we have more than more than one or two, um, we're gonna do a vote for which is the best solution built using Lightning Forms. Um, so that can be uh, using Lightning Forms Modern inside uh, SharePoint Online Modern Lists. And the best solution um, will, uh, will basically win the Lego. So there's some time to do this. We've got until the uh, 31st of July, uh, midnight British summer time. So if you want to have a go at um, building a solution using Lightning Forms and using some modern SharePoint lists, it could be a solution that you want to build for your organization, or it could just be one like I did. Um, but uh, what we're looking for is the sort of uh, yeah, best one that's using all of the different Lightning Forms features and uh, quite an imaginative sort of uh, solution uh, that you've been able to build that, that solves a real world uh, business problem. So um, if you're interested in doing that, you can get those over to brett at lightningtools.com. Uh, as a, a sort of 10 minute recorded video using something like Camtasia or something like that. And um, like I say, we'll uh, close that competition out on the 31st of July at midnight and uh, announce the winner on social media. And the social media accounts are, are Twitter. Um, it's just uh, twitter.com slash lightning tools and likewise for Facebook. Uh, so just facebook.com slash lightning tools. Okay, so at that point, I'm gonna open up for some questions. So if you do have some questions, please feel free to use the chat window uh, so you can, um, or oh, sorry, the, the question pane, so you can uh, go through and, and add a question uh, in there. And also if you um, want to, you can also raise your hand and then I can unmute you and you can ask your question uh, verbally. Uh, but this is recorded and um, I won't be uh, editing those out. So feel free to use the, uh, the, the question pane if you'd prefer to. So if you do have a question, like I say, raise your hand. Okay, so I see um, one question in here. So can the form be embedded into a SharePoint modern page? Um, also, how is the uh, mobile view of these forms? Do you have any 
special settings turned on for it to work in iOS for instance. So some great questions there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just um, alt tab back to SharePoint. Okay, so we'll go into the uh, into the leave booking, and we'll hit new. Of course, there's something crazy going on with that. It's disappearing on me. I don't know why. Just bear with me one moment because there is the practice one that I did earlier. Here we go. We'll use this. All right, so we're going to go into the same leave booking. Hopefully, this one will be hey for me. There we go. So we've got the uh, the, the tabs and, and so on. We're also taking up the uh, the, the large form. And what you'll notice if I just bring this down, that it is a completely responsive design. So if we were to open that up uh, in sort of a, a mobile window, then it's going to um, still show us the, the tabs, show us the controls and, and so on. Um, so we've got the, uh, the the leave booking and the book leave there as, as different tabs and that whole form has uh, been reduced for me on the page. Uh, so yeah, it does display well on mobile. And uh, like I say, if you also use that inside Teams, you can add that as a Teams tab as well, um, which if you, uh, that's one nice way of using SharePoint actually is via the Teams app. So uh, you could uh, add the SharePoint app to a Teams tab and uh, and in there point it to a, a specific list and then you can use the Teams app on iOS, which is a really nice way of doing it. But even if you opened it up directly on iOS, you're going to, it's going to fit the uh, the page for you on your uh, on your iPhone. Okay, there's also a question here from Susan. Um, so, can a button be disabled until a certain field is fill out, filled out? Uh, E.g., so make it so that you can click uh, request leave until a number of days is, is filled in. So, yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that's also something you can do. Um, so, uh, you can set conditions on on the display values of these fields as well. So, uh, so certainly that's uh, that's possible. All right, I think that's all the questions. So, um, and we just check for any raised hands. I don't see any raised hands. So, I'm going to thank everybody for attending. I uh, hope you found this useful, and it'd be great uh, to see um, some of those videos coming through. And um, if you do have any questions afterwards, please feel free to reach out on Brett at LightningTools.com. Okay, many thanks. Bye.